perfect wisdom. With the divisions of the Abishamayal Amkara. Translated by Edward Conzay, 1904-1979. University of California Press Berkeley, Los Angeles, London. Chapter 80. The Absence of All Defilement and Purification. The Four Perverted Views. Subhuti. If all dharmas in their own being are non-existent, and if they have not been made by the Buddhas Pratayika Buddhas, or are its two, by the stream winners, by the candidates of the fruits, or by the Bodhisattvas who course towards enlightenment, how can one conceive of any distinction between these dharmas? And how can one respectively determine them as denizens of the hells, as animals, too, as humans? How can one say that from this karma there results the hells, the animal world too? The Tathagata. For the non-existent performs no actions through which it could go to hell, the animal world, too. Through which it could be reborn among the various kinds of gods, too. Through which it could attain the fruit of a stream winner, too. Through which the Bodhisattva could course in the path to enlightenment, or through which the Tathagata could attain to the knowledge of all modes, thereafter setting beings free from samsara. The Lord. So it is, Subhuti, so it is, as you say. The non existent can have no karma, no activity, and no fruit. But a foolish, untutored common person, who is not conversant with the holy dharmas, does not wisely know that dharmas in their own being are non existent. With thoughts which have arisen from perverted views he brings about various deeds and he gets the kind of personality which corresponds to them, whether in the hells too. Among the gods of the station of neither perception nor non-perception. So the non-existent has no karma, activity, or fruit. And what is non-existent, that is just non-existent. As to what Subhuti has further said about the fruit of a stream winner, too. The Tathagata's knowledge of all modes is not the path non-existent, and so also the fruit of a stream winner, too. The knowledge of all modes. Subhuti. Yes, they are all non-existent. The Lord. Can then a non-existent Dharma reach a non-existent Dharma? Subhuti. No, O Lord. The Lord. It is thus that both the non-existent and the path are Dharmas which are neither conjoined nor disjoined, which are immaterial, undefinable, non-resisting, with one mark only, I. E. No mark. But the Bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom, persuades through his skill in means those beings who are inclined to the four perverted views. And who, with regard to the five skandhas, perceive permanence in the impermanent. Ease in what is ill, a self in that which has no self, a loveliness in that which is unlovely. And he also dissuades those who have settled down in a belief in existence from that belief. The cognition that the perverted views are unfounded in entities. Subhuti. It there perhaps an entity which is a truly real existent. Which is such as it is and not false. On which the foolish common people have taken their stand with the result that they have settled down in it as being a truly real entity, an existent, which is such as it is and not false. For if there is none such, how do they bring about the deeds which prevent them from being liberated from samsara with its five places of rebirth? The Lord. There is no entity even as fine as the fine point of the tip of a hair on which the foolish common people could base themselves to bring about deeds, except by way of perverted views. I will give you a simile which will make this point clearer so that intelligent people can understand it. What do you think, Subhuti, when someone sees something in a dream does he see an entity on which he could base his enjoyment of the five sense pleasure? Subhuti. The dream, to begin with, is not how much less that on which the dreamer could base his enjoyment of the five sense pleasures. The Lord. What do you think, Subhuti, is there a Dharma? Conditioned or unconditioned, with or without outflows, which is not like a dream? Subhuti. No, there is not. The Lord. Does samsara with its five places of rebirth exist in a dream? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. What do you think, Subhuti, does there take place in a dream the development of the path, thanks to which one would be neither defiled nor purified? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. That Dharma seen in a dream is a non-entity outside of all conceptions and it cannot be conceived by any words or verbal expressions. The Lord. 
when a reflected image is seen in a mirror, is there then, an entity which could bring about deeds with the result that it would go to one of the five places of rebirth. Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. A non-entity is that reflected image, except for the foolish common people being deceived. How, then, could it perform the deeds through which it would go to one of the five places of rebirth? The Lord. Does it, then, have a development of the path, thanks to which it would be neither defiled nor purified? Subhuti. No, it does not. Because that reflected image is a non-entity. The Lord. When an echo emerges from a wood, a cave, a mountain, a glen, or a steep slope, is, then, that echo an entity which performs deeds by which it goes to the various places of rebirth. Subhuti. It does not, O oh Lord, because that echo is a non-entity. The Lord. Does that echo have a development of the path thanks to which it would be neither defiled nor purified? Subhuti. It does not because absolutely that echo does not exist. The Lord. Since with regard to a mirage there is the perception of water, a river, a city, and a park where there are none of these things, can then that perception of a mirage perform deeds through which it could go to the various places of rebirth? Subhuti. No, it cannot because absolutely there is in that mirage no water, river, city, or park, except for a perversion of perception and a delusion of the eye. The Lord. Does there take place in this perverted perception a development of the path thanks to which it would be neither defiled nor purified? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. If a magician had conjured up various illusions, such as the body of an elephant, a horse, or a bull, an army division or a chariot, a woman or a man, would then that illusion be an entity, which performs deeds through which it would go to the various places of rebirth? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. No entity corresponds to that illusion, not even one as tiny as the fine point of the tip of a hair. So there is nothing on which these deeds could be based. The Lord. Could it, then, have a development of the path thanks to which it would be neither defiled nor purified? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. On the part of a Dharma, which is a non-entity 205, how could there be a development of the path, or a defilement of purification? The Lord. Is an illusory magical creation, conjured up by the Tathagata, an entity which performs deeds through which it would go to the various places of rebirth? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. That magical creation is a non-entity. The Lord. Could, then, that illusory magical creation have a development of the path, thanks to which it would be neither defiled nor purified? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. What do you think, Subhuti, is anyone therein defiled or purified? Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. Just because there is no one who is defiled or purified, so there is no defilement or purification. And why? It is because they have stood in eye-making and mind-making that beings are defiled or purified. But since one who sees true reality is neither defiled nor purified, there is in fact no defilement or purification. End chapter 80